Hey guys, what is up? CK here, and today I'm going to be showing you a really cool trick uh, between Photoshop and Illustrator on how to actually make a small image or layer that has a, a brush and a raise and it's just blurry for whatever reason. If you want to turn that into a crisp edge, you can easily do so. So, um, here we've got two, Im two images, right? Two of the exact same image. So basically, the current issue with Photoshop when you scale things up is it's a bitmap. So when you scale things up, it basically goes blurry. Now, you should be able to see how blurry that is. You can just tell the difference. It's just horrible. Things start to go pixelated and blurry. Okay? And then what we're also going to do is going to create a new layer. When you do a brush, we've got a... Say, we'll just make, a, make it black. So we've got this brush here. Yeah? Um, maybe we've wanted to change some bits, so we've used some eraser, but we've set the hardness, right? So we've got this kind of thing going on, okay? And if you've maybe done that and you want it to be crisp like the rest of this brush, and you're like, oh, God, I hate that. Okay, so we're going to do three different things here. Well, actually, two. Um, you've got this image. We want to get it as big as the one on the right, but keep it to the qualities on the left. Okay, so how do we do this? Make sure the correct layer is selected in the layers panel. Go to the uh, rectangular marquee tool. You're going to basically draw a rectangle around it. You're going to go edit, copy, and you're going to go to illustrator. So illustrator is required, as I mentioned before. Let's you're just going to control V. I'll go to edit and paste. And you're going to drag this into the middle, whatever. And what you're going to do is you're going to want the image trace window. Now, if you don't have this, you can go to window, image trace, just uh, click it and uh, make sure it's got a tick next to it. And, yeah. And I have done that. There we go. So, basically what this does is this converts a bitmap image to a vector, which basically means it recalculates all the colors, all the paths, everything whilst you scale it and all that stuff and it basically redraws the lines okay so if we go here say if we want this to become a silhouette it's going to do that because um, the image is just black there's no transparency to it or anything there's no like yeah basically that so you can do all sorts you can do line art uh, you can do all this you know sketched that's more of like the silhouette effect maybe you'd look for in this sort of image um, shades of grey, you know, you've got all these things, you've got all these templates where it starts to actually, you can see how it's actually getting rid of colours, now you're thinking, how can it edit a colour on an image that's there and put colours under it, well that's what it's doing, it's, it's getting rid of certain colours that exist in it and recalculating and redrawing and re-meshing things up to make it actually like a brand new image sort of thing. Um, but anyway, for what we want for this is high fidelity folks, all we want to do is make it crisp, make it sharp, rewrite the JPEG image, uh, which is a bitmap, into a vector. Uh, so you can mess with things, you can give it uh, more colours, but because it's only got like three or four, well, four colours, uh, this is not really going to do anything. If you slide this down, pass four then it should have done it but it hasn't in most cases it would you would see a lot more difference when there's you know a very vibrant or multicolor image and then you've got paths so you can choose how many paths there are and like it starts to merge it maybe it makes it a bit smoother a bit more flow a little better it's whatever uh, for now I'm gonna leave that as the default because we want to try keep it as accurate to the original image. Now you can see the difference between the original image every time I click preview on and off. Now it doesn't look like it's changing at all which is exactly how we want it um, because it's just as crisp as it is at that size which is great because we haven't rescaled it yet. So we might as well just leave it like that. So what you want to do is if you're previewing it you want to untick it and then you can trace it. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to go up to object and expand okay and this expand window will open up if it wants to open there we go um, and we're just going to click okay 
Now you start to see all these paths. So basically if you go to the layers, you'll see all these layers. So basically what you can do if you really wanted, you can start taking little bits out of it. You can start modifying this image. Um, and maybe you can also move things. So say if you wanted to, you've got this here. You can actually move things about. You can modify the anchor points as well. Um, it's all it's all really cool. Anyway, we don't need all these layers. All we want is this object. So you're gonna go to the group object, and you're just gonna click the little circle to the right. So it's got like a little line around it, and it'll basically all this will be blue. And all we need to do is you just need to go to op edit copy. Go back to Photoshop, paste this in, put it as pixels, and there you have another copy. But the thing is, it's going to be the same problem. If we scale this up, it's still going to be blurry. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to go back to Illustrator, and you basically just scale this up in Illustrator, and look. It's super crisp still because it's basically redrawing the lines that it scales. You uh, make sure you select it, edit, copy, go back to Photoshop, paste as pixels, and boom, you have this amazingly detailed version. You can see the difference here between the crispness. Now, obviously, this is a bit smaller. If you really wanted to, you can make it even bigger. Uh, I could just drag this out even more even more like huge okay and it's all selected we'll just edit and copy again we'll do this we'll paste it in and boom you have this version which is bigger than that one and it's perfectly crisp and obviously if you see some weird things going on you see you see this this isn't actually caused by uh, but this shows how accurate it is right let's uh, get rid of this for now you see here, there is like a kind of weird thing there. Illustrator can do that. However, that is actually there on the original version. And this has got weird stuff going on. So if you see these things in actually this one, in this example, it's not actually caused by Illustrator or anything. So, But that can happen in rare occasions. It depends what image you're working with. Um, but you can see they're as crisp as each other. And all that good stuff so then if we get back to this so you've got this weird thing here now it could be quite different um, depending on how much brush you've used but say if we just wanted to copy and paste this and edit copy right, let's get rid of that for now let's go to here let's go to bit blip and okay so you got this and you want to go to high fidelity photo maybe and you see you've got kind of shading or maybe you want to go to silhouette basically it's just going to trim it off just like that and colors is going to basically where the original colors were on the image it's going to start to chop them out okay so if you wanted it to be thinner and thinner or taller based off where this is, see, in this shading, there's basically loads of different tones of grey. So it's taking the original image and basically letting you crop that off. Uh, obviously, you might, you won't be just controlling this part if you've got like a few parts that are um, like that. It's going to do all of them uh, in, in the same, like it's going to affect them all in the same way. But see, so you've got that, now you've got this weird looking thing here <laughs> I guess. Uh, obviously you can add paths and stuff again that just kind of modifies if you want it to be say if it's like this and it's like really ragged and horrible like maybe you've got like a unsteady hand just bring it in boom it's like a smooth path Phew. like a, a snake or whatever and again this can modify you can modify it a little bit more you can add some noise get rid of some noise whatever um, now uncheck the preview, trace it, go to object, expand, then select it, blah blah blah, blah edit, copy, back here, paste it as pixels, 
and boom you have the two versions here let me just get them like kind of next to each other basically you can see there very nice flowing line instead of one with horrible jaggeds in it and stuff and a pixel like deformation basically you are smoothing it out there and you know even this part here where there was like a bump in the brush that's just smoothed out into there so it's really good and it can be used in many ways like this um, so if this tutorial helped in any of these ways you know helping with resizing of layers and objects and images and whatever or maybe it helped like a stroke and a path would be a lot more smoother and kind of flow a lot more please leave a like it'll uh, help a lot and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.